So we have to go an additional 160 kilometers, no problem. We've already used up two hours of our three hours and 25 minutes, so how much do we have left here? We have 1.25 hours left. And because we're dealing with a constant speed situation, we can use our understanding that speed is equal to the distance traveled divided by the time. And we know our distance we need to go is 160 kilometers. We've got to do it in 1.25 hours so I got 128 kilometers per hour seems pretty straightforward All right, next one, 17 in centimeters by x is equal to 9.75 plus 1.5 t cubed. So 9.75 plus 1.5 t cubed. Calculate the average velocity during the time interval t equals 2 to t equals 3. All right. So how are we going to figure out average velocity? Well, the average velocity as a general concept is the change in the position divided by the change in time, which means for this problem, If they want the average velocity between 2 and 3 seconds, I'm going to take the position at 3, subtract off the position at 2, and divide by 3 minus 2. Let's make sure that's right. Looks good. Okay. So to do that, we've got to find out what the positions are. So the position at 2 is going to be equal to 9.75 plus 1.5 times 2 cubed. Similarly, the position at 3 is going to be equal to 9.75 plus 1.5 times 3 cubed. Give me a moment. So, plug these in the calculator, plug and chug it a little bit. I can see here that so if I subtract to get the distance, And the problem I stated that this was in centimeters per second. Okay, so the next question is the instantaneous velocity at t equals two seconds. So this is going to be a little bit different for us because it's not asking us for the average velocity, it's now asking us for the instantaneous velocity, and that's a different ballgame. 
In order to get the instantaneous velocity, we have to take our position function and use the slope algorithm in order to find the instantaneous velocity. So, the slope algorithm has two steps to it. Take your function. And for each part, as long as they're added together, for each part, you're going to first thing you do is multiply the coefficient by the exponent. Second step. Subtract 1 from the exponent. So let's look at our function. So 9.75 plus 1.5 t cubed. I'm going to apply the algorithm to both of these. Now, don't forget when you look at this, this is really t raised to 0. So if I want to get my velocity, multiply the exponent times the coefficient, but this time 0, so that whole term just goes away. And I'm left with this term here. So first step, multiply by the exponent. So 3 times 1.5 is 4.5, and then subtract 1 from 3. So there's my velocity function, there's my velocity function, and they want the instantaneous velocity at t is equal to 2 seconds. Well, if I plug in 2, 2 squared is 4. Two squared is four. Um, four point five times four. Well, four times four is sixteen plus two. Let's say eighteen. So it's eighteen centimeters per second. C asks, "What's the instantaneous velocity at t equals three seconds?" Oh, no problem. We can do that now because I have my velocity function. So at t is equal to 3 seconds, so now I have 4.5 times 3 squared. asking this is they said, look, let's take the average velocity, the average velocity between 2 seconds and 3 seconds, and we got in the 28 range. Well, at 2, the velocity was only 18. At 3, the velocity is 40. So it makes some sense that it should be between 18 and 40 should be the velocity. And we see here it's 28.5. Um, now we're going to do instantaneous velocity at 2.5. Okay. Sign with me. Let me check my calculadora. So in the middle, it makes sense that the average should be close to the instantaneous halfway through. Um, this is a cubic function, though, so it's not exactly the same. Um, oh, I like this one. 
the instantaneous velocity when it's halfway through, uh, when it's midway between position at two and position at three. Well, the position at two we calculated was 21.75. The position at three was 50.25. Halfway between those, So halfway between those, I got to be 36 centimeters. I did this by um, adding these two together and then dividing by two, because I'm thinking it's like an average value. It's like right between the two. Um, so I added 50.25 plus 21.75, and I got 72, and I divided by two, and I got 36. So now what we have to do is we got to do something a little interesting is we need to figure out, well, what was the time? What was the time when the position was, um, the time when the position was 36? We're going to get that time and we're going to put it back into here. So let's see if we can't do that. So using this function, 